ladies and gentlemen, today is April 19, 2017, and this is the Kane Kale Show, episode 335, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Keenan Lafferty, and I would like to welcome you to another show. Today, we are going to be talking about a very special subject, and that is taking two volatile things, anime drawing, cartoony, not considered art by some, and traditional hoity-toity art, right? Combining the two, taking the best parts from each, and making a brand new style that we like to call fusion, and I'm sure you've seen some books at Barnes and Noble and stuff about fusion drawing, but uh, we're not going to talk about those. But anyway, uh, we're going to be we're going to be making this embarking on this mission, so to speak, with none other than <laughs> Metal Slug. <laughs> and it's absolutely one of my favorite games in the world. And specifically, I'm talking about this today because not only do I like to draw these characters, but over the years, we've been seeing a lot of different styles emerge from this series. And one of which you can see here where it's like they become a little bit more anime and all the like becoming uh, this is like the SNK style and also like going all the way to like One Piece. And there was always something about Metal Slug 3. And in the meantime, let's go ahead and give you a little bit of give you a little bit of history here. Speaking of Metal Slug 3, let's go ahead and pull that up. So Metal Slug 3 was always one of my favorite pieces in the series. And because of this loading screen right here where you actually picked your character. I feel like they captured so much character in those pieces and then subsequently in all the later series they begin to kind of simplify them to an anime style. Now this is actually Metal Slug. It's an old arcade game from SNK and if you don't know what an arcade game is, like long, long, long time ago before you had consoles and stuff like that, uh, you'd actually go to buildings where they just had tons of cabinets. They call these things cabinets where they had a TV a giant TV stuck inside of it and you have to operate the on switch you have to take a quarter and stick it in this little slot it would hit a button that would turn the game on for you and then you could play it until you died and then you had to put in more quarters as you can tell it was a very expensive hobby but regardless this is an awesome game and um, we're gonna be talking about that today But before we get into that ladies and gentlemen we need to take a stroll down a very special place and that is of course the lovely lane so let's go ahead and head on over there Head on over to tinyurl slash kncalfanart and click on the secret link called see all and when you do, you will be indeed dazzled by the amazing pieces that you guys have been submitting. Thank you once again to everyone who has submitted their work and if you have not yet, go like the page, submit it and you could be scrolling on by next week. You can have a lot of fun with that. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, a little out of the way, let's go ahead and get into our fusion style. Fusion style, very, very interesting. Let's go ahead and start that. Okay, so. And you guys probably thought I was gonna pull up a time lapse right there, didn't you? You probably thought that. Who thought that? No, nope. today we are doing all live. We are doing it live. And you wanna know why we're doing it live? Because I've been noticing something about myself. And that is that I've been becoming very nervous. I've been becoming very nervous over the last few weeks. And that's because I've been doubting myself. I've been doubting my art skills and I've been doubting my abilities to basically draw for you guys. And because I want everything to look good. I want everything to look great. And I want you guys to think that I'm really skilled and awesome. Um, but what I'm not showing you guys is my actual style, how I do this stuff real time, and my thought process. And that's what I wanted to show you guys today, okay? So uh, in case I didn't say this before, today we're focusing on Fio, which is our character all the way over here. It's on the right side. Um, and just in case you're wondering, that's the same character here. Now, do you notice something interesting? See how much I simplified? See how I basically turned her into an anime girl? And how her face, it's its very generic. It looks like it looks like Mika's face. It looks like uh, any other anime character's face. And to this, we say no. To this, we say no. We're going to be fusing this style with this style today. Uh, we're not saying that this is terrible. We're not saying that this is all bad. But we lost a little bit of character. And that is one of the things that I loved so much about this. So what we're gonna be doing is we're taking the, the proportions and the creation of the character in this sprite and we're gonna be moving it over. We're gonna be moving it on over. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So the first thing that I'm gonna start doing, uh, my thought process here is, and I'm gonna go ahead and just make this on another layer, is I'm considering, even though we can only see part of the face, I'm considering, well, what is the circle and the chin shape that we would use to make this character. And then from there, we can start to draw some measurements. Ah, and this is from, in case you guys haven't seen, the How to Draw Faces episode of the Kane Kale Show. And if you guys are curious what I'm talking about, click up here, it'll take you back. And that 
will describe the principle that I'm using here. It's really good for figuring out how somebody else laid out their measurements for their characters. And then from that, you can steal it, as we talked about last week, you can steal it for your own evil plans. But uh, yeah, that's what we're doing here. So right now, hey, look at that. So our, our measurements are about the same. At the bottom of the circle, that's where the nose is. And then the eyes are very low. They're very low on the circle shape. So that's something we're gonna be keeping in mind. Uh, another thing that I find interesting is that the mouth is also very low on the, down on the chin shape. So these are basic, basic measurements that we're gonna be taking forward, okay? And uh, I wanna go back to, I wanna go back to what I was saying earlier about feeling nervous or feeling a little bit inadequate, feeling jealous, all these negative emotions that kind of affect us as artists. And I want to tell you guys an interesting thing, an interesting thing that I realized the other day. And that is, and we're getting deep right off the bat. We're, we're going to real talk right off the bat. And that is that you're not actually scared of that stuff. You're not actually worried about feeling inadequate. You're not worried about feeling crappy or nervous. Those things actually don't bother you. You know what really bothers you? What bothers you is that you think that you're nervous, you think that you're inadequate, and that everyone else is. You think that everyone else has their crap together, so to speak, and you're the only one that missed the program, or you missed the memo, and you're not with the program, okay? That's what we're actually afraid of. We're afraid that we're all alone. And I think that that is actually a very eye-opening, it's a very eye-opening revelation. Because it, it makes you realize that, hey, well, once I find out that everybody else kind of deals with similar things as me, you know, actually, maybe I'm just part of the crowd. Maybe I'm just nervous and, um, and inadequate and, and fears of inadequacy and all that stuff. <laughs> maybe I'm that way just like everyone else. And then once you realize that, you're not afraid anymore because you realize that you're all working on it together. You realize you're all working on your own skills and your own uh, things together. And there's no reason for you to feel ashamed of not being sure of yourself. Okay. So, okay. So the first thing that I'm doing, going back to the drawing for a moment is, uh, we have the nose put in. Okay. So remember what we were talking about, how the measurement of the nose is right below that circle. Okay, cool. We're good. Now, the next thing that I want to do here is that I really like these eyes and you want to know why I like Theo's eyes in this piece. It's because they have a very different shape to what we're usually or at least what I'm used to drawing. Most of the time when I draw attractive faces, right? Attractive anime faces, all the eyes, basically it looks like this. Let me draw like an attractive face for you. So let's go ahead and do this. So my go-to attractive face is small nose, right? And then the eyes go down like this. And look at that, they're like slanted. And you have like these very mysterious eyes like this. And then you have like the eyebrows that go up like that, right? And then you have the lips like this. See, and just looking at that, you can be like, oh yeah, that's like a pretty face. That's a pretty face. But the problem is that not everyone's eyes look like this. Not everyone's eyes have this upward crazy slant. And these are like super exaggerated, right? So the reason why I like Fio's eyes over here is because they're actually arching downwards. They create this downward look. And so I want to take that and I want to bring that over to the piece. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, and I actually caught myself drawing these faces a lot. I draw this face a lot. This is my Barbie face, guys. For those of you who are curious what my Barbie face is, that is it right there. And you'll probably notice it in a lot of my works. So uh, we also realized that the eyes are low on the circle, okay? Pay attention to the circle for a moment, guys. Look at how low they were, right? Here's our, uh, our measurement line, okay? So we know that the eyes are very low on this piece or on this face. And we want to make sure that we capture that. Okay? But notice how I'm still drawing them sort of anime-like. These eyes are still anime-y, but we're fusing it with something a little bit more realistic and uh, creating something that's slightly different from what we're used to in anime. Okay? So we've got these downward sloping eyes. Okay? And I like it that her eyebrows are literally above her, her hat. So we don't even see that. You don't even see the, the eyebrows. Covered by the hair, covered by the hat. Okay, now to push this a little bit more towards the anime style, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simplify this chin shape. 
I'm gonna simplify this. Uh, or I'm gonna make this a little bit more angular, slightly more angular, but I don't wanna bring it to a point because that is also another very anime thing that I do a lot. I always bring my chins to like perfect points. We wanna get away from that today. Now we want to also bring that mouth down. I'm gonna draw her mouth probably a little bit different than usual. Uh, I'm not gonna draw, cause that is a very like cartoony style thing to do like this, right? And there's like the teeth and that type of thing. So I'm gonna just keep the mouth fairly simple. Uh, maybe it'll look something more like this, okay? So this is good. I'm actually really liking this thus far. I'm liking this thus far. This is a good sketch. That's what we call a good start. Okay, now the nose, I also want to really make sure I'm getting this nose right on. Now the nose is cool because it has like this really flat shape and it kind of creates this type of thing. So I wanna see if I can really drive that home. See if we can really drive that home. And then we can fuse it with anime by um, making the lines on the bottom of the nose and the side of the nose really strong. But this is a very anime thing to do where we will sort of begin to omit the bridge of the nose, okay? This is where we are going thus far. So uh, I'm actually really liking this a lot, I'm really liking this a lot. And this is exciting because every summer, now that the sun is finally starting to come out here in Utah, um, I always like to do, <laughs> it's so hard to talk while I'm literally drawing this at the same time. But uh, during summer, I always like to do, every now and then, I do like some sort of like pool party picture. And I remember back in the days, like many, many years ago, I always did Metal Slug stuff because I just absolutely love that game. Love that game to death. And what I'm thinking is that we should do another Metal Slug pool party. Another Metal Slug pool party picture. I think that'd be really fun. And we could basically take care of a lot of lessons with that because a lot of people have been talking about like, hey, how do I draw backgrounds? How do I do perspective? How do I make sure my characters feel like they're in the atmosphere or actually in the background? And that has to do with like coloring your shadows and keeping in mind like ambient light, sunlight, all that stuff. And we can get into that stuff. We can get into that stuff and have a good time. All right, so uh, this is looking really good. This is feeling like the Fio. But notice how it doesn't have, it doesn't have the proportions of this over here. That's what we like. I'm actually gonna change this to a different blue color. I think that's gonna be a little bit nicer on the eyes. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, maybe, I'm always really picky with my sketches whenever I'm kind of laying them down, what color I use. I often default to like a dark purple or like rather like a grayish purple. But today I'm feeling blue, today I'm feeling blue. All right guys, so time for a very important thing. As you're sketching, a very important uh, hotkey that you're going to learn right now is Control J. Control plus J. And that is going to duplicate your layer. And the reason why you do this is because, think of it as a save state when you're playing a game. You can always go back to this. Let's say that we decided to give her some crazy anime hair, right? And like stuck out like this. And then we filled up our history, right? All over here to the point where we couldn't go back enough, right? We get to like maybe here. See, because you hit Control J, you can always go back before you put on the hair. So that is lesson one, ladies and gentlemen. Always be hitting Control J when you're about to make major changes to a piece. Uh, specifically when you're working with a face because sometimes I find that I like to move things around. I'll move things on the face around. And uh, that will change inevitably the, the character of the face. Watch what I'm gonna change right now. I want to change, I wanna make these eyes open a little bit more because she feels a little bit uh, sad, right? That is a common thing with drawing downward slanted eyes is we associate it with this. We associate it with the downward slanted sad eyes, like that, right? But we don't want her to necessarily look sad. And that's another thing that I notice over here, is notice that her eyes are down, but she doesn't look sad. And I don't know if it's because of this mouth here, but uh, I wanna try to capture a little bit more of that. And that is probably one of the main things that I want to tell you guys about, uh, is that considering not necessarily how something, when you're drawing, you wanna pay attention to feelings. You wanna pay attention to feelings. We're talking about feelings today. Uh, because oftentimes your feelings will not deceive you when you are looking at a face. The emotion, you wanna capture emotions in a face. And it's also probably because of this mouth. Maybe we could slightly turn it up a little bit. It's got these thinner lips and I don't want to miss those. There we go. Yeah, okay, I think it was the mouth that was causing that. 
Okay, so that's good. That's feeling much better. I'm liking that a lot. Now, uh, another reason why I wanted to explore this face today is because obviously we're gonna be drawing a Metal Slug Pool Party. And in the previous ones, we've drawn like Aerie and Fio, which are the two girls of the series. We've made them look more anime or like very like attractive models and uh, you know, with like more um, traditionally beautiful faces. But for this one specifically, I want to make them look like these ones here. I want to make them look like how they appeared in Metal Slug 3. A little bit not as traditional. So I'm gonna move this eye over just a little bit. And that's looking cool. See, so we're changing up the face a little bit and then we can compare. I love going back to my old Control J and comparing and contrasting. See if I'm capturing, if I'm moving closer to the character that I want or moving away from it. Okay, so next up, let's go ahead and throw in that collar. We know that the neck is gonna be coming down like this. It'll change up this chin just a little bit sticking out just a little far. And also her chin is, is pretty small. It's pretty small in the original sprite. So I wanna see if uh, reducing this chin a little bit will also help with that. And it actually looks like it's not really. Let's go ahead and compare back and forth. Let's see, do I like that chin more? I like that chin, maybe something in the middle. Oftentimes if you do something and you don't like it, oftentimes the answer lies in the middle. It lies in the middle, so that looks good. Okay, cool. Let's get that neck coming down, and then we're gonna add the hair. Don't worry, we're gonna add the hair. The, the most iconic features of Fio, which are, of course, her hair and her hat. Gotta have that stuff. And it's gonna be looking good. It's gonna be looking real good. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw it in. I really do like the costumes of Metal Slug 2. Um, they're just so, they're simple yet effective. They just work really well. Just work really, really well. Cool, digging that. Uh, let's throw in the ear, even though it's gonna be obscured eventually. We're, we've lost the information in the original character select of where the ear is or what it looks like, so we're just gonna kind of fill it in. We know where ears go because we're smart and we have learned our anatomy. And that brings me to another interesting thought that I had earlier this week. And that is people talking about learning anime or wanting to learn anime as their first art style. And some people actually say that that's a bad thing. Some people are saying that learning anime is bad. It's gonna set you up with a lot of bad habits and that you should start by learning realistic anatomy first and realistic painting first. And then from there, you can begin to simplify. You know what I say to that? I need to put it on my face for a dramatic effect. I say fooey to that because learning anime is exactly what I did first. I didn't learn traditional art. I hated traditional art. I hated drawing realistic people. I was like, that's so boring. Why would I want to draw something realistic? It's like, I already, I'm surrounded by realistic stuff. Why don't I draw things that I like? Things like cartoons, things like animation, things that really hold my interest. And so I started with that. And you know what I found out as I did that? First of all, that I sucked, yes. Yes, that I developed some bad habits, but then you know what happened. Because I allowed myself to, I'm gonna hit Control J again here. I allowed myself to progress, right? I allowed myself to progress naturally with what I was interested in. And then from that, my excitement led me to the things that I needed to learn next, right? I started drawing anime and I started to realize, oh man, like, these bodies, the way that they're drawing the bodies, I really, like my bodies look terrible or my perspective on these bo bodies is terrible or my arms or, you know, any, any part of the body, right? <laughs> they just, it all sucked, it sucked. And so then I said, huh, maybe I should learn how to do that, right? Rather than saying, okay, before I start, before I start anime, I need to learn all these other principles first that I don't really want to, you know, uh, and because of that, right, it's like you get burnt out. That's why I tell people not to do that stuff. Like focus on whatever it is that you want to do. And then naturally you'll find, you'll find the places that you need to improve. Okay. And then you'll have, then you'll have the motivation. You'll have the reasons for why you want to do it. Or is if you kind of hold yourself back at the beginning? I know it's funny. It's like, it's literally telling you to do the same thing, but it's just going about it differently. And I think the, the main difference is that once you do it wrong and then figure out the way that you need to do it right, and that is kind of learning traditional 
anatomy and traditional drawing, uh, then you look at it as from a different perspective. And that is, oh, wow, like I have a lot to learn from this. And uh, this is going to be interesting as opposed to, oh, man, I'm holding myself back and I can't do what I really want to do until I figure out these, uh, these fundamentals, right, as everyone calls it. Okay, so actually, I'm going to move this up. I'm going to move this hat down. Okay, here it comes. It's time for another Control J. And I'm actually really digging the way that this character looks because it's not, it's not traditionally pretty. And, but I like that. I like that because that was what I liked about the, the face. And we can kind of fudge it back and forth a little bit. We can fudge it back and forth a little bit until we get that exact char character that we're looking for. Okay, so I'm going to cheat right here. I'm going to use the power of Photoshop to go ahead and lasso this. We're going to get the basics of this character down. And then we're going to move to the question catapults. And then I will just begin to refine my sketch real time for you guys while I answer your questions. Your questions. Because what I liked about this hat was that it covered a lot of the face. Covered a lot of the face. It's like really low on there. And this comes up like this. This head actually looked a little bit low. So the hat should come up like that. Aha! And Theo, of course, has this cool, awesome, Awesome ponytail. Let's not forget about that. Aha! Blah. I wonder if, okay, can you pull, I'm thinking about the, the way that the hat would look. I'm probably overthinking this, but how the ponytail would work with the hat. I'm thinking the hat would probably sit on top of the ponytail and that would angle it down a little bit more. It'll angle the brim of the hat downward. Give us a little bit more of that feeling that we're going for. Ha! Ah, that's cool. All right, that's that's feeling really good, ladies and gentlemen. That's feeling really good. Okay, cool. So with that, let's go ahead and launch some question catapults. This is so much fun. So much fun. Feels good to be doing another live stream, or what, like more like a live stream, live drawing for you guys, actually showing you guys my process, showing the ugly side sometimes of my drawings and how, you know, just like rudimentary my sketches start out. Um, but let's go ahead and move into the questions. First one is coming in from Ace Cantes. And they are asking, just wanted to know how to draw paint color transparent, translucent objects. That is things like glasses. Oh, that's interesting because that is one thing that we have not added to Fio yet. That's what we're gonna be getting to in just a moment. So we will go for that. And I will also be answering this question coming in from Hair Rave, lopsided face shapes. So I'm realizing that when I'm sketching, drawing on the computer, I flip it, end up with a lopsided face. This is very common when you're drawing straight on. Uh, it happens to everybody. It happens to me all the time and it does, it drives me crazy. But the first thing that you need to realize is that that's why I talk to you guys about focus on the feeling. Focus on the feeling of the face before you start to really pick it apart and say that it's crappy because the feeling of the face is the most important part. And you also have to realize that not everybody has a perfectly symmetrical face. So a little bit of asymmetry, uh, asymmetry and a little bit of lopsidedness will actually do your drawing a bit of good. It'll kind of, it'll add a little bit more character to it. Again, focus on that feeling. And I'll give you a hint. This is in another uh, thing that I, another tutorial that I talked about on the 90% eyes theory. That is also, you can check that out up here. That has to do with, remember when we were talking about that feeling, I felt like Theo was looking kind of tired over here or rather sad, but I didn't want her to appear sad. Um, and then what I did to change it was I started opening the eyes a little bit more. I started changing the eyes a little bit in the mouth as well but I have a firm belief that 90% of your feeling of your character is in the eyes. So that is where you should look first and then subsequently uh, take a look at all the other features of the face and see if you can find a solution. Okay, but yes, uh, my best advice for fixing the lopsided face is to uh, get in there and uh, do your mirror technique. And that is done by, I have mine set up on a hotkey, but you can do it easily by going to image, image rotation, and then flip canvas horizontal okay and then action setting as an action that's a whole other thing you can find another easy tutorial on that it's pretty easy but that's how you do it manually and it works it allows you to see it with new eyes with well fresher eyes not as good nothing's gonna beat 
having an actual person who has never seen the drawing before come in and critique it. And that's why you should take take your criticism, you know, with a humble attitude. If someone comes in and says your drawing sucks, right? Well, that's first of all, that's bad bad criticism, but you want to ask them why? Why does it suck? Why do you feel, you know, and they might say, I don't feel anything from the character. I don't like the way the character's face looks. Why do you not like the way the character's face looks? I don't like the expression. I don't like I don't like the eyes, maybe, you know, and try to dig further and further in on that. And then, and then from there, you can, th <laughs> then from there, you can formulate your own solution for how you're going to go about and fix that or figure out if you even need to, because just because someone says they feel that way, doesn't mean that you necessarily have to do that, right? Doesn't mean you necessarily have to do that. You're the professional, you're the artist, you figure it out. Uh, another really good way to get feedback is to ask multiple people because if multiple people start giving you the same the same feedback, then that's when I really start to pay very close attention to what they're saying. Uh, but that's my best advice, okay? So I don't even know how we got on that tangent. Crazy tangent. Moving on, we need to draw these glasses in there. And I think what I'll do to answer the question about the glasses is maybe I'll just do a quick little grayscale on this character. Do a quick little grayscale. Get this thing looking fine. Get this thing looking good, looking fine. But see how I'm going about refining? I'm not really talking about what I'm doing. I'm just rather doing this and uh, letting you guys watch. But if I were to explain what I'm doing is I'm kind of cutting away. I'm cutting away with my eraser. I'm flipping my stylus back and forth like this. And I'm going through and I'm beginning to refine my edges. Really figuring out, okay, where do I want the edge of this hat to be? What is the exact, you know, shape that I want this hair to have? Go in there and refine that. And boom, there you go. Actually really digging this. Really digging this a lot. Very, very fun. Ooh, I actually really like that. I like that little bit of shading underneath the eyes, the eyelids. That's cool. It's very cool. Um, the lips, I actually do want to move up just ever so slightly, just ever so slightly, because I want them to be low, but I don't want them to be that low. That low. That looks grand. That looks grand. I'm going to go ahead and like lower down the, the contrast on this line, because I want this nose to appear a little softer. Good. Very good. And now for the final touch, and then we'll start adding a little bit of grayscale to this and we'll finish it up. I'm gonna add those glasses on there, people. Let's add those glasses on there. Let's go get this, this. I always like to go around the outside of my character. This is talking about line weighting. I like to go around the outside of my character and uh, thicken the lines along the silhouette. I find that that's always just a really nice thing to do. Always oh, just gives your gives your pictures a nice finishing touch. Let's see here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm liking this a lot. Cool. Cool. All right, next question coming in. Let's go ahead and pull up. The next question. We got some good ones today. You guys have been sending in so many new ones. So many new good ones. Next one is coming in from Little Shocky. They are asking, I'm a student at Full Sail, especially want to work for Riot Games. Biggest love in life is just creating characters, backgrounds, how they look and act. But I'm lacking a lot of skill and confidence. And this is exactly why I wanted to go into uh, my opening thought today. And that is that, you know, we're, we're lacking confidence and we're lacking, we're like nervous. But we're not, but that is a normal thing. That is something that everybody feels and you shouldn't feel ashamed about that. Know that you're part of the in crowd by feeling that way and that that problem, that feeling isn't really ever gonna truly go away. So uh, get used to it. But the thing that you can deal with, the things that you can work on is that uh, they're also saying here, I can't remember the last time I managed to finish a sketch. Don't, and I want to give up on art. Do you have any ways that they can, I can improve myself, advice or tips? Okay, so here's my best advice and that is, Find people that are doing better than you. Find people that make you feel nervous and then study them. Study what they're doing. Study how they are getting across 
their, their character designs. Find out how they're using flow, how they're using design. Uh, if they have any sort of tutorials, watch those too. You shouldn't just be watching me. There's plenty of other awesome artists out there that are actually way better than me and giving tutorials on the stuff that they do. And that leads us to our next question. And that is, how do you avoid jealousy and anxiety for posting your art? It's coming in from White Cup. Hello, Keenan. I've recently discovered your channel on YouTube. It's been super informative. I've seen people ask questions. It makes me want to... Oh, how do you avoid getting jealous of other people's art? Um, and how do you have... How do you avoid anxiety for posting art and thinking it's not good enough? And that is, yeah, that's the feeling that I'm talking about, uh, White Cup. And that is, the, it's just always going to be there. You think that I've gotten over that? You think that now I post my art up and it's like, oh, wow. Like, I've finally gotten to the point where I'm confident with my work. Everyone's going to love it. And yeah, I don't feel anxious or jealous. I never felt jealous of somebody, right? No, of course, I, I still feel that way. I'm super jealous of people that have YouTubes that are have way more subscribers than me. Uh, their businesses are way more successful and profitable than mine. Uh, their comic is way better than, and they actually finished their comic. You know, I get jealous about all kinds of stuff. And know that you don't have to feel bad for that. Instead, just embrace that feeling. Know that it's part of being human. It's part of being an artist. And uh, the way that you channel that you want to take note of that. Like, first of all, you need to admit that you're jealous. Admit that someone could possibly be better than you and study them. Figure out what they're doing. Figure out what they're doing and copy it. That's what I do. <laughs> all right, next question. Next question. But copy it properly, okay? Not, not just straight up steal it, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, next question coming in. This is the second to last one. Hating what makes you money. Okay, so I'll read this and then I'm going to go back to refining my sketch and then we'll end today. This is coming in from Alpha Gusta. So they're saying that they are a student at university and they have a project that is a toned down version of what someone would design at Riot, Blizzard, et cetera. Um, the, but the brief itself is exactly the opposite of what I want to do as an artist. Do you have anything? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Is that. Are you saying that you don't want to do, you don't want to do a project that would resemble something that Riot or Blizzard would do? It's interesting. Or is it the character? Like, is it the character that you're concepting like you're not interested in? Because that I can actually, um, I can relate with big time. So let's go ahead and talk about that a little bit. Hating what makes you money. And have I ever been in a position where I've been working on my job and I don't really particularly enjoy what I'm working on? And how do I get through that? And of course the answer is yes. There's plenty of times where I've been assigned a character to do a splash or an advertisement for a character that I didn't particularly like. One that comes to mind is Dr. Mundo. I don't like his design, I don't like his character, I don't like his voice, I don't, I don't even like the way he plays in the game. Yet I was tasked with drawing his splash art for the Executioner skin a long, long time ago. And so rather than complain about it, right, I had to figure out a way to get interested. Okay, now here's another thing that I really like about Theo. I think this is really gonna pull the entire piece together. And that is that her glasses sit so low on her nose. It sits so low on her nose. They're like literally almost coming off and touching her mouth. Like they're almost touching her mouth. That was like super fun. <laughs> I love that. That's super funny. I might have to, oh wait, you know what I do? Here's the thing with glasses. Here's a really good uh, suggestion for glasses is first of all, don't draw them on the same thing as your line art because you want to be able to move them around a little bit. So create a new layer and draw the glasses on a separate layer like this, okay? Because you want to really think about the design of the glasses. Like the brim or the problem that I was having is like this piece on the nose was a little bit too wide or is looking a little bit too wide. So uh, we might have to end up moving it up a little bit so it doesn't look too janky. But uh, going back to Mundo, how I learned to like him was that I said, okay, well, what is interesting about this character that I don't draw on a lot of my characters? Well, normally I like to draw girls. I like to draw Ari. I like to draw, you know, all the sexy ladies from LOL. But uh, this one is just like a, a super muscular, hulky, ugly looking dude. But the musculature, hmm, that's interesting. Wow, I could get really interested in figuring out how to draw these accentuated muscles, okay? And for those of you who don't know what Dr. Mundo is, he's basically like Purple Hulk. Imagine Purple Hulk with like blue veins and he's got like a cleaver. He's got Maneater Mildred's cleaver, okay? And, <laughs> and so I had a lot of fun figuring out how to draw these exaggerated muscles. 
And then lo and behold, by the end of the project, I actually liked Dr. Mundo. I actually liked his design and I was, uh, I was interested in it. And so that's my best advice to you, Alpha Gusta, is that whatever drawing or project you're working on, figure out a way to get interested in it. And the way that you can get interested is, is by saying, hey, what can I learn from this? This is something that I wouldn't normally do, hence I don't like it. So while I am doing this project, what can I use or what can I do to learn and then use this knowledge later on, okay? And that might be working on your anatomy, might be working on exaggerated muscles like I did with Dr. Mundo, that type of stuff. Uh, that's my best advice for that. All right, next question. That looks awesome, by the way. I love the way that looks. I'm <laughs> so happy with that. Uh, last and final question coming in from, uh, evil cat robot working remotely for a company. Um, they're asking, uh, you mentioned that you work remotely for riot. How likely is it that a gaming company, specifically big ones are going to hire a concept artist that will work remotely, especially from other countries, for example, Norway, All right? And I have to be completely honest with you here. Uh, evil cat robot, the chances are slim. They're slim because First of all, well, they're slim for somebody that it's gonna be their first job, right? They don't have a lot of exposure. It's gonna be hard for that company to find you uh, if this is your first gig. So my best advice to you, let's go ahead and get back to the drawing here. Let's finish this up. Where is my stylus? I have no idea. Oh, there we go. Let's go ahead and add some grayscale to this. Oh, so sick. Love it. Go ahead and uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and merge that. Let's go ahead and darken this down. Let's go ahead and start adding some grayscale, people. Grayscale, people. And I kind of want to push this a little bit more towards purple. Should look nice. Uh, but yeah, the chances are slim. And I don't say that to completely shoot down your dreams. I'm, I promise that's not what I'm doing. I'm just rather trying to just give you some honest insight and tell you how I did it, how I did it and how it worked. And the reason why Riot contacted me to work remotely for them again was because I had, first of all, worked there for them. They knew that I existed. They knew the kind of work that I did. They knew my workflow. You know, there's an element of trust that comes from working from someone uh, prior to that. But also there's plenty of remote artists that we've hired that have never worked there. And the reason why we hire them is because we are familiar with their work. They do stuff that we like, and we're willing to place the bet that this person can manage themselves. They don't need somebody else. They don't need a project manager to look over their shoulder every day and see what they're doing. You know, we're willing to take that chance that they will manage themselves and that they'll do good art. And it comes with that compromise of, well, what is the skill of this person? What is the skill of this person? What is their prior work history? Are they known for working remotely? Have they worked remotely for other people? So you gotta think about it in terms of that. Uh, the best way that I can suggest that to help you on this is to always consider it from the point of the company. Always con imagine that it's your company. Now imagine that you want to hire somebody remotely. What concerns would you have? Well, first of all, you wanna make sure that they're gonna do the job and, and that it's gonna be good, right? That's your first concern. So what do you do? You look at the other companies that they work for. Have they been doing good work? When the answer is yes, then okay, you're already on a good track. And uh, you know, so it's just like that type of stuff. Ask yourself the same questions as if it were your company. And very quickly, you'll start to understand, oh, now I know how to give myself a leg up if I wanna do this type of stuff, okay? So that is my best advice for you. Uh, just has to do with doing that, exp getting that exposure, um, getting that experience, right? A lot of people talk about experience. And it's such an elusive thing. It's such an elusive thing. And the way that I got my experience first off was I started working for a local company, a local company just called Sandman Studios. My dad actually gave me a good leg up because he was going to be designing uh, sets for them. He's gonna be designing sets to like make a movie. They made movies and they did like visual effects. And uh, he was gonna be designing that stuff for them. And in the meantime, the person who would later become my boss, he had written some scripts or he had scripts for his movies that he wanted to make. My dad brought me those scripts and he said, hey, you should maybe like uh, just do uh, like a storyboard for this. And I'll just like kind of like a secret or like slyly slide it on the table, I'll, like open this folder talking about something else and they'll be on the side. 
sure enough, came my, my dad came through for me, got me the job, <laughs> got me exposure, right, at the right time. And uh, I just started working there. I worked there for like four years, illustrated books, rendered out sprites for games, not drawing them, not like Metal Slug, not cool like that, just literally just being a render monkey. Just being a render monkey, taking 3D models and uh, rendering them in After Effects. It wasn't really cool at all. But uh, regardless, it was, expo it was exposure and it was experience and it built my portfolio. So that way when the time came for me to go interview at Riot, I already had a portfolio. I, I could already say that I was working in the industry. I didn't go to college. I, w I already had work. Like I already was working. So yeah, that's my best advice on that. I've said that a lot. <laughs> I've said that a lot. I, <laughs> I retire to easy phrases when I'm trying to focus on drawing at the same time as talk. So it's actually very, very challenging. <coughs> Very challenging. <coughs> All right, so uh, let's go ahead and talk about glasses. That's the last thing that I wanna talk about. So glasses are a really cool thing. The easiest way to uh, create a lens type of effect is you want to just grab, go on a new layer, and you wanna think about this, is that the lenses themselves are going to distort whatever is behind it, okay? It's gonna distort it almost with Imagine it's like a low opacity filter that's gonna be placed on top of it. Now notice it's more prevalent here because we have the hair, we have all kinds of different contrasting values that are happening there. Whereas if we take that color and we place it here, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Like it's just gray on gray. So you don't need to necessarily worry about that until you get to color. Then I usually like to think about placing like a very light blue color uh, to reflect the lens or like a light white color. Usually it's actually has to do with uh, the atmosphere. So if it was like a blue sky, I would make the lenses blue. But here's another really cool thing that you can do. And that is putting extra shine, extra shine on the lenses. For that, let's go ahead and kick this all the way up to white. And let's go ahead and put some heavy shines on here. Now the shines are really cool because once you put these on, these basically will cover up everything. I'm sure you've seen it in anime where the character is like like this evil anime character with glasses and the glasses have this glow on them that covers the eyes and it makes it look really sinister, right? And there's like this glow on it that like completely like blows out the entire screen. It like looks like this, right? It's like blowing out. Um, so that's like an effect. It's not necessarily realistic, but a similar principle can be applied if you're going for a fusion style, an anime fusion style. So a little bit of light kind of up there. And this is just kind of like eyeball. There's no real reason why I put it there. You could also put it through the middle of the glasses like this and have the shine look like that. You know, that might look a little bit more natural for you, but uh, that's the way that I like to do it. That's the way I like to do it. So give it a go, see if you like it. Sometimes a little shine at the bottom, a little shine out on the bottom will do you good. That is awesome. That is awesome. I love it. I love it. That is totally going to be our reference for the upcoming picture. That is really fun. Okay, guys, so as you can see here, I would say that we have successfully accomplished our fusion style by taking, and I did it real time for you guys so you can see how I did it. Hope that was educational for you. Hope that was very educational. I'm gonna darken that down, make that look a little nicer. Um, but yeah, the way that we did that, just to sum everything up, Today we had the goal of taking a look at our old piece, or taking a look at all the treatments of the Metal Slug characters saying anime, anime is not real art. We gotta go fusion now. <laughs> we gotta go traditional. We gotta be hoity-toity. So we said, okay, well these interesting characters right here, these interesting proportions captured something. I really like that. So let's see if we can mix these two together. Let's see if we can mix these two together. We took measurements and I'm gonna go ahead and write notes, write notes. Because I'm sure that, well, for those of you who are writing notes, that's awesome and kudos to you. Okay, so we took this and we combined it with this. Combining, brotherly combining. Okay, and then over here, we took measurements. Measurements. And, oh man, it is really hard to, <laughs> it's really hard to talk and write at the same time. We took measurements. And then from that, we translated that over to our new character. 
and created Fusion. Fusion! Yay! And that is simply, quite simply put, just a mixture of our anime and more realistic styles. Taking interesting um, proportions, taking things that aren't necessarily traditional with creating like um, like an attractive character, not like a like a Bayonetta character. <laughs> I mean, I hate to throw Bayonetta under the bus, but you know, that type of thing, right? The super tall, skinny, slender, angled eye face, you know, that type of stuff. Uh, and it's not just Bayonetta, right? I'm I'm just as guilty of always doing it, so you know, I'm not not knocking Bayonetta, not knocking all that other stuff, uh, because I do it just as much. And that was why I wanted to do this specifically today. That was why I wanted to explore this a little bit today. I wanted to create a character that had an iconic proportion to their face, something that I knew that I saw in the original Metal Slug Three, and I wanted to capture that once again today. And I would say, people, that we did a good job. We did a good job. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so thank you so much for joining me on YouTube as usual. I hope you enjoyed this live drawing. All right, I'm getting back to the real stuff as well as the answers, uh, the answers that I gave you on your questions. If you would like to take a look at all these layers for yourself, dissect it one by one, just click up here. It'll take you over to Patreon where you can download not only this PSD, but all the other PSDs from the past. That's right. Almost, I think we're getting close to 100 now. So yeah, if you just want to, yeah, literally go to Patreon, support the show if you like it, right? Of course, it's not, it's not important that you do, but I would highly recommend it because you can dissect. It's like, it's like 100 PSDs, 100 PSDs just for the price of a freaking hamburger. So go check that out, you guys. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, you guys take care. See ya.